Hi, my name is David Petrie. We're in our campus dining hall, and I'm here to take you on a tour of how we keep food waste out of the landfill. We work very closely with our food service provider, Meriwether Godsey, in a collaborative effort to try to stop food waste before it ever happens. We do this in three ways. The first thing you'll notice is a lack of trays. We use trayless dining to reduce 25 to 35 percent of the food waste right from the beginning. We also use small batch cooking stations that prepare individual meals for students and faculty and staff. There's also an ongoing educational program directed at educating students and other patrons of the importance of food waste reduction. All of the food waste in the cafeteria is generated from two major streams. The first is leftover prepared food in pots, pans, and serving trays. All of this food waste goes into our food waste digester located in the pot room. The food waste digester might best be described as a kitchen grade stainless steel stomach. It uses enzymes to break down up to 600 pounds of food waste in 24 hours. It creates a liquid byproduct that is piped into our grease trap. The second major source of food waste in the cafeteria comes off of the trays of patrons eating here. Once they've finished eating, they take their plate to the conveyor belt which feeds into the dish room. The food is then rinsed off the plate and is passed through a large commercial sized disposal and then it's pumped into a food pulper. The food pulper basically removes most of the water in the food. That material is collected and placed in 32 gallon tubs which when full come out to the dock for me to pick up. The reason we have two streams for our food waste is because the cafeteria generates more food waste than we can compost. So I have the luxury to have equipment like this in our front end loader, which you'll see, that enable me to take the lid off. This has a lot of advantages. It allows me to very evenly distribute the food waste in a nice thin layer exposing a lot of it to uh, the carbon that I'll be adding, which is in the form of sawdust. We get our sawdust off of our property as well. It's uh, generated by a sawmill operation that we run. And the leaves, of course, come off our campus as well. So everything that's going into one of these earth tubs to generate compost is coming off our campus. As we stir the contents of the earth tub with the auger, it gives us a really good opportunity to judge the moisture content. Ideally, the compost have about the moisture content of a sponge that's just been rinsed out and squeezed one time. The white material that you see on this compost, called actinomycetes, is an interesting microorganism, but when you begin to see this present in your compost, you know you're at the later stages of, of your composting. That is a fail-proof sign that you've got a good product that's free of harmful pathogens. What we're looking at right here is a windrow. We've brought this out from our big leaf pile out in the woods that we've collected over the course of the fall. As we've got compost coming out of our earth tubs, we'll bring it out here and we'll literally open this windrow up like a trough, put the compost down in the center of it and then cover it back up. We add to these leaves the wood chips that you can see in the background back there. And the wood chips really just help keep air flowing through the pile so that it doesn't go anaerobic anywhere. This is our compost screener and literally just shakes the bigger material out of the compost pile. The wood debris and larger stuff, even rocks. This screener will remove all that, separate it so that you get just the final product, which is a, a pretty fine consistency material that works very well as a top dressing. So we use our finished compost in three different applications on the campus. One is a top dressing when we are doing our spring and fall turf renovations. Secondly, as a soil amendment out here on the farm for growing vegetables. And thirdly, we use small portions to brew compost tea, which is then sprayed on the campus lawns, introducing beneficial bacteria and as a nutrient. We take sustainability seriously here at Guilford College and reducing our food waste and having zero food waste go to the landfill is just another example of our commitment to sustainable practices.